This is Dave Sundstrom. Welcome to another video celebrating entertainment from decades gone by. You know, the good stuff. Every once in a great while, you can point to a specific episode in a TV series where something happens that changes that program forever. Sometimes it's a good thing and other times it's for the worse. But either way, the episode in question dramatically alters the course of the show. Such is the case with one particular episode of MASH that aired midway through season one. Give me a couple of minutes and I'll do my best to explain all. During the mid-70s, MASH was arguably one of the most popular shows on television. Not only was it a hit with TV audiences, but the show was a critical darling as well. Over the course of the program's 11 seasons, MASH was nominated for over 100 Emmy Awards and won 14. Now the episode that I'm talking about today, the one that truly did change everything, originally aired in January of 73, titled Sometimes You Hear the Bullet. This episode has always been a special one for me because it featured Ron Howard in it. In this episode, Ron plays a young man who has lied about his age so that he can join the Marines. Since my original viewings of this episode, I've discovered that this part of the script was a revision and added after the original version was drafted. The original version of the story focused on Tommy Gillis, a childhood friend of Hawkeye's who is a journalist who is enlisted so that he can write a book and give a real, genuine, authentic account about fighting on the front lines. Gillis is a fun-loving guy and a prankster, much like Hawkeye, and it's easy to see how the two of them were friends. Later on in the episode, when Tommy is gravely injured and dies on the MASH unit's operating table, we see the moment that changed MASH forever. The conversation after Tommy's death is dead serious, and Hawkeye openly weeps, not just for his friend, but for all of the soldiers who had died on his operating table previously. It is a scene that the network brass at CBS did not want to happen. They adamantly advised against it, but producers Larry Gelbert, Gene Reynolds, and Burt Metcalf felt strongly about the script and they didn't want it altered. Metcalf talked about that moment in 1983 with journalist Lee Winfrey as MASH was preparing to air its final episode. He said, CBS didn't want us to do it. They told us, you can't kill him off, this is a comedy. It truly was a watershed moment for the TV series, and it gave the creative team responsible for the show courage to incorporate more drama into the series, which was originally seen by the network as nothing more than another comedy in its TV lineup. It's because of their courage that we have the moment at the end of the third season after Colonel Blake leaves the 4077th. Without the producers of the show standing up to the network during the making of Sometimes You Hear the Bullet, it's unlikely that moments like learning that Blake's plane had been shot down with no survivors would have ever happened. Getting back to that pivotal episode during the first season, the version that airs in syndication often leaves out a critical scene at the end of the episode where Hawkeye and Trapper steal a Purple Heart medal destined for Frank Burns and give it to Ron Howard's character instead. It's a wonderful moment that is both heartfelt and funny and is 100% mash. You know, it breaks my heart that I didn't get a chance to talk about Colonel Flag at all in this video. But I've published another one about him. There it is. Go ahead and click on it. I'm pretty much done here. But first, thank you so very much for watching.